All right. I want to talk to you for a moment about retaining and developing your workforce. It's hard. Recruiting is hard. Retaining top employees is hard. Then you've got onboarding, payroll, benefits, time in labor management. You need to take care of your workforce and you can only do this successfully if you commit to transforming your employee experience. This is where ISOF comes in. They empower you to be successful. We've seen it with a number of companies that we've worked with, and this is why we partner with them here at Work Defined. We trust them, and you should too. Check them out at isolvedhcm.com. What is going on, people? Welcome to the FARF Breaking News Acquisition Research and Funding. That was my announcer voice. William, <laughs> how are you doing today? Man, I'm doing great. Sunday, 21st. Feeling good. We got a lot of cool stories to go through. Yeah, so, a lot uh, of yeah. stories. A lot of yeah. stories. I don't know if they're cool. Your I hair like is it. looking, I wanted to tell you this when we got on camera. Yeah. Your hair is looking mighty flowy today. See, this is what happens when I condition my hair. <laughs> Seriously, this is what happens. when I, <laughs> On the off chance that I condition my hair, this is what happens. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even so, know what that word means. Condition to me means like conditional logic. That's the I've, only condition I've, I know. I've I've never been a person that put a, uh, I wash my hair every once in a while, and I, I don't condition it all that often because I've never put a lot of products in it. So it's just kind of a bit for my whole life. But when I condition my hair, <laughs> it's usually when I get my beard trimmed is because I don't own a razor. So I'll go to Great Clips so that they trim my beard, but they, they also condition wash your hair. They wash your hair. <laughs> and so they wash your hair and they also condition. It's like, I don't do this shit at home, but I right, let's go. So do you think if I went in to get my beard trim, oh, they yeah. would wash my head? Oh, they could. They probably they could. would. They'd give me oh, like yeah. a scalp massage, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, down yeah. for that. But how much Can't is hurt. it? Oh, it's not that much. It's like $8. It's nothing. No, $8 isn't bad. No. No, it's worth Talk they... about hair. All right. <laughs> So we're gonna have you hair talk. <laughs> hair talk. So uh, you've got two boys, so they're not. If they're getting hair salon and appointments, mm. that's their thing. No. So my oldest, sixteen. Her last time she got her hair done, whatever she got, three hundred and some mm. dollars, right? Right. Oh snap! Right. Right. Okay. No. She just went this week, and she had a friend's cousin or something or other did her hair, $180, and that was she, a discount. Is she getting it colored? She got highlights and trimmed and yeah. whatever. Uh, she's 16. Col- yeah, color cost yeah, money. Yeah, no. that's true. Color nothing. Get out of here. No, my boys go to great clips. <laughs> It's a twenty four dollar trip plus tax. Exactly. You know, it's all good. Exactly. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Kick us what, off do you want today. To start? what do what do we got? All right, have you heard of Ozempic? Like you've seen the commercials. Oh oh, oh. no, right? that's a that's O'Reilly that's Auto Part. Oh they, they didn't No, no, that? that's it. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, Ozempic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um Here's what's happening, and you can see it in North Carolina, but you can kind of see it across the United States too. The weight loss drugs. Um, there's a, there's another one, W E G O V Y. I don't know it as well as Ozempic. We go be. We go Yeah, we go They got a so, lot of commercials. Okay, so their drug costs are really really high, mostly because they don't produce a lot, mm. and so the costs are through the roof, right? So. Um, and these are things that actually help people lose weight. So these are these. This isn't a this is a scam. These are actually drugs that actually help people lose weight. So the insurance companies are now um, they're jacked up their prices because pharma jacked up their prices, and employers are now kind of having to either make the decision to either pay for those things or to not pay for them. And this is what's going on. You can look at this story. It's in Politico. Uh, dot com. So you can go and look at the story. But they're talking about North Carolina because this is happening with large, large employers in North Carolina, where they're basically cutting out that cost and saying that's an out-of-pocket expense, hmm. which is crazy to me. And it's the reason I wanted to kind of pitch it to you is like, you know, first of all, if this were a cancer drug, and it was again, and it was high and all that stuff um 
would we would we be outraged? Yeah, of course we would. Right? It would be outraged, yeah. but it would it would also be part of what is offered. And weight loss, I, I don't know that that should be any different, right? I mean, I'm not a doctor, but weight but think about, heavy being overweight leads to a lot of problems. That's correct. Right? Yeah. Right. So if you could be preventative. Then why wouldn't you cover Ozempic? We'll just use that as an example. Why wouldn't you cover Ozempic for your employees? But it's it's we're going to look at what's happening in North Carolina. Definitely go check out the article on on Politico. But I think we're going to see this more and more because the the drug cost is so high. It's not going to go down because the mm-hmm. demand is just going to go up. So it's going to go up higher, which means that insurance companies they got to recover their costs. Employers are going to cut it out because it costs too much. And I think it's I think it's sad because again this is something that could prevent a lot of things down the line, mm-hmm. and it yeah. could actually you know like people are always to us they're always talking about like how do I retain my top employees? <laughs> how do I hire? Yeah, <laughs> you know the weight loss drugs. I, hey, during during a recruiting oh. event, during a recruiting event, if somebody were uh, the- obese. I would uh, actually, I'd lead with that. It's like, hey, you're familiar with Ozempic, right? This yeah, is why hey. you're not in recruitment. See, See we this cover is, this that. This is why you're on this side of the microphone. <laughs> we cover that shit. Come on in. We got, we got you. All, All right. right. Do, do you have Sheets down there in Arlington? Mm-hmm. We do. We do. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. So Sheets is making some head, some headlines this week for mm. rejecting indigenous and black candidates due to criminal records. So this is it. This is hmm. it's actually pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting what's going on here. So, <clears throat> so they dispro- disproportionately screened out American Indian, Alaskan right. natives, black, and multiracial applicants during the hiring process. So, interesting. yeah. So, so the claim here states that they have a long-standing practice of screening candidates out. <laughs> due to prior run-ins with the law and convictions. Yeah. And so, yeah. of course, we got some numbers behind this. But uh, so black applicants, 14%, 14.5% more likely. Uh-huh. Indigenous, 13. Multiracial, 13 and a half, And then, of course, whites are the highest at 8%. Right. No, I'm kidding. Whites are <laughs> way down the list. They're just getting accepted. Um, so I thought this is interesting because Sheets is not a small organization. Right? No, no, I mean, no, no. We don't have – I think we may have a few up here. We don't but have is it is it that they're screening out brown people or is it that they're screening out people with criminal records? Or the thing that, the thing that we probably would have to dig in to find out is mm-hmm. are the – the brown people. I'm gonna say that because I can. I can actually say that. Our brown people's the criminal record is the criminal record more uh, harsh. Like there are those murder and grand theft auto and and uh, like harsher felonies. So it's yep. it's one thing to kind of run a headline and say, "Oh, we're screening out brown people." <laughs> okay, got yep. it. However. If if it's if it's apples to apples and the felony, felonies are the same, okay, murder, murder, got it, you know, rape, rape, got it, and then you did that by demographic data, then they should they they should be held liable. Like that's yep. that's just that's just crap. Now, yeah. if you dig into that, you find out actually the felonies weren't all the same. You know, but mm-hmm. not all felonies are not all not all felonies should be treated the same. No, they shouldn't, and and that's where that's what the claim is. So the the EOC EEOC obviously is uh-huh. is alleging this um, and putting this forward. Uh, however, the what what this gets into is that people within certain categories are predisposed to certain environments, right? Which is creating that that wide gap there and it just so happens i'm sure this happens with a lot of employers it just so happens that sheets is leading that that race right it'd now. be it'd be, in- be interesting to dig in there maybe down the road and see if technology is involved here if they're just doing mm-hmm. it human to human you know what i'm saying like if, if you know bob, bob, bob in recruiting mm-hmm. you know hates brown people all right let's, let's see if that's it yeah. or if it's actually tech that they're using I'm sure That's they're using. This. I mean, so they're they're a large company. I'm sure they're using yeah. tech for background. 
I'm somewhere. not sure of the rest, but right. nonetheless, interesting, and uh, people should know about that. 100%. Google fires 28 employees after sit-in protest over controversial yep. Project Nimbus. Yeah. Whatever. Contract with Israel. This is on TechCrunch, so you go uh, find out about there. So we've talked a little bit about this type of stuff before. It was more of the CEO was pro uh, Israel, and a bunch of employees didn't like that and left or whatever. This is actually they fired people. <laughs> so, so mm-hmm. you know, it, it begs the question for me in terms of like leadership has to be more active in defining what is and it isn't acceptable at work. This isn't new. People have had sit-ins. You know, like this is this isn't a new bit, but it seems like this is going to be more vocal with the younger generation. It's going to be something that companies are going to have to come, contend with one way or another. I mean, if you right. if you lay down a, a strategy or lay down kind of your guidelines and say, yeah, we don't talk about politics at work, period, end of story. You bring politics in the workplace, you've decided to quit. Yeah, we might fire you mm-hmm. or you might quit, but you've just made that decision. Yeah. I think the guardrails are going to have to get clear around stuff like this. Yeah, it, it's it, this. I believe we just had a show about this somewhere it, along the line. Something came up where I, I've always been confused. Can you or can an employer prevent you from talking about politics at work? At work? Or is it more of a guideline or a suggestion like, hey, you shouldn't be talking about things like this at work. And I've always been confused on that and what I can and can't say in a corporate environment. Um, right, right. But it's, you know, they're polarizing topics that create it's, it's, problems. It's, you know, when they say they want your whole you at work, this is the shit that drives me crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah, you want like, my real authentic self? You well, want my real authentic self? Yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm going to have a sit-in. Well, okay, that's my authentic self. So, right. like, No, a, a sit-in, I okay, if, you, if you're disrupting the workday with things. That's a bit. That's that a different is thing. different. That's very yeah. different. But if you're just voicing an opinion or talking yeah. to people. Wearing a t-shirt. I, <clears throat> wearing yeah. a, yeah, I think that's different as well. Anyhow, all right, let's move on to workday. So I'm a, I'm an EEOC fan today. I'm following Boy, their I'm their uh, thing. <laughs> I'm following their 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 news uh, their line Ryan of news. Leary, this week. EEOC expert. Good gosh. I'm telling you. So the question is, should Workday face a lawsuit? Right. So EEOC says, hell yes, mm-hmm. Workday should face a lawsuit, uh, alleging that its AI screening tool is biased. Right. So check that- this out. Is that is that is is that native or is they is the is a, are they using a partner for that? Ah, uh, beats me. It sounds like okay. it's, it, it sounds like it's it sounds native based okay. on the art. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, it wouldn't so matter because it's still under their brand. It's still under their brand, right? So the allegation is that Workday is allowing employers to pre-select applicants outside of protected categories, uh, which violates uh, Title Seven in mm-hmm. the Civil Rights Act, nineteen sixty four. So. Obviously, Workday says this case has no merit, that they're arguing that that they are not the employer. They're not the staffing firm. They're not the employer. They're not the employment agency or labor. They're just the tech, and these are Mm. features within the tech. I've always been I've always been fascinated with this, not with Workday in this particular regard, but like in the sourcing tools Mm -hmm. where you can turn on like women. Okay, so you're searching for a Java developer, yep. and you is can there a turn difference on, you to can, this? I'd... You can click the button and say, "I want female candidates," Boop. "I want African American candidates," Boop. or you could turn that off. Boop. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not. I, I I really want to track this to find out actually how this plays out on the tech side. I don't think they're liable. I don't. I don't think Workday. I think our Workday will actually win this because yeah, they're, they're, they're not the technology. Lying. They're the technology, and they're not making the decisions. This is a no. this is an issue of the employer and the hiring teams and what they're doing. In, unless they customized it, you know what I'm saying? Like unless they're unless they're the ones that not just the implementation, but unless they've yeah. actually created it. Mm-hmm. But if they just basically gave them the tool and said, "Hey, you can do," there's several different ways this can be configured. Figured, right? And the employer configured it in a way that should be configured. That, that's on them. 
Yeah, but you bring up a good point on, and and we'll we'll keep moving forward here. But yeah. so and really any software, but sourcing tools in 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 particular, yep. that's always been a, when we've talked about this. It's always been a question. You're saying you're there was debates around. Oh my gosh, you're looking at LinkedIn profile photos now. You know the person's <laughs> Chinese. Yeah. Or, okay. Or photogenic. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm using a sourcing tool, and I'm specifically saying, give me Asian women. Or yeah. black women, or not yeah. black women, is what is the difference, right? And so, I, I and and this is, I think these are people have these answers. I don't have these answers. No, I, have I don't think complaints anybody, and the thoughts. It's an ethical and moral dilemma that no one has the answers to. Right. So nope. no, we'll have to find somebody that has them and bring them on the show. <laughs> Good luck. I will find that person. Person. All right. <laughs> Gener uh, just comes from uh, fastcompany.com. Generative AI's refusal to produce controversial content can create echo chambers. This is fascinating to me I don't because know what that means. okay, so when you're using Gen A, AI and you say, "Hey, I want a uh, black Jesus," mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of these different models got in trouble because they the images that they created. <laughs> right. Right, right. We're historically right, right. incorrect, right? Yeah. You know, like black KKK members, you know, okay, you can kind of run down the list. Uh, you know, you know, a uh, 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 Hispanic Hitler, you know, all that kind mm -hmm. of shit. So you can create all that stuff and then all of a sudden they pulled back from that. These models did and said, Yeah, we're not gonna do that shit. So now what's interesting about that is the intersection between Gen AI and friend free speech. So if someone wants to create a black Jesus or a Hispanic Hitler, I Why mean, can't those I? Are, they're, they're horrible examples. I get it. But if they want to, why can't they? So when I, when I, when I read it, it's like what it made me think about was how do we navigate free speech in the future as it relates to Gen AI and who gets to decide what is and is it protected at work? So I'm really thinking on the work side, it's like things are going to happen mm -hmm. with Gen AI. And again, who decides what's controversial? It's yes. controversial. You know what I'm saying? Like the controversial, you know, for me, you could use an image and it could be stripper glitter. Like I'd be all right with that. But for other businesses, they would not be all right with that. Right. And, and and the right now what's happening is the Gen AI AI tools are making that decision. Instead right. of the human being, instead of the boss, instead of the employee, instead mm -hmm. of that. No, the, the, those applications are making the decision for you. So, so just think about mm -hmm. think about free speech. Think about uh content that's going to be created for you and and how it intersects with work and free speech. Cool. That works for me. There you go. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go with a local story, Drexel University. I did not go to Drexel. I went to Temple. I could have went anywhere. Yeah. 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 And I chose Temple. 100%. Um, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So there's a Drexel. It, this one is actually, I think, very relevant to anybody. In right. the audience, and one I think that's going to get a lot of uh, a lot of conversation debate around it. So, a Drexel ex uh, executive, Drexel University exec executive, who uh, is diagnosed with PTSD, okay. uh, alleges that a mandatory Zoom meeting violated ADA. Hmm. Okay, so they were forced to be on a, and and I don't have all the details clearly, right. but they were forced to be on a Zoom call on right. video uh, to speak with a number of people. And they said they weren't comfortable. They didn't want to be on this call. They didn't mind being on the call. They didn't want to be on video for this particular call because it was causing them stress and anxiety. And so things happened, bad things happened, not bad, know, bad things, but it didn't right. go the way that Drexel or whomever was on the call would really right. have wanted the call to go. So, um, and I think it, it, the, there's more to the story, I'm sure. And I, and I know every organization has different thoughts on this and this, and we've spoken a lot about accommodations in, in the workplace being super critical. Right. Um, we've also talked about interactive process a lot, yeah. but we've kind of 
brushed over it a lot too. Um, and I think, I don't know that a lot of organizations actually have an interactive process and I'm not sure many people know what an interactive process is. It's right. just, you know, it's not just two people taking part in a discussion, right? This is right. where the employee is actually part of the conversation, discussing their own accommodations, helping to build their own accommodations. Right. Um, and they don't have that there. And that's well, part the, of the, some of the The troubles. thing that throws me uh, is mandatory Zoom. So mandatory Zoom is like yeah. a man any type of mandatory meeting. Um, you and yeah. I do a ton of podcasts, and so there's a lot of people that join our podcast that aren't on video. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, some of our friends, when we get on, on calls with them, aren't on video, and they never turn on mm -hmm. video. I am I so tempted care. to just close the camera right now just for the hell of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't care. It's, yeah. If, if that, but you know what I'm saying? Less. Like, if yeah. this, is an, if this is an executive, one would assume that they're adding value to the company, et cetera. And if they yeah. don't want to be on video, they don't need to be on video. Like, yeah. again, Zoom and all of the technologies that we used prior to COVID, we weren't on video. By and large, right, right, we just used right. them as a way to do calls, conference calls. It was yeah. conference call technology. So the join-ins or join-me's and all of the Uber conference and all those things, we just used them to call people. And then <laughs> kind of went back old school there. <laughs> COVID, I know, right? <laughs> Three COVID, years ago. COVID made us all get on video because we wanted to, you know, see people, we see, to see what's people. going on. We wanted to kind of attach yeah. all kinds of stuff there. This is one of those deals that's super easy to resolve. It's like, hey, you don't want to be on video for this call or for any calls? Great. Yeah, yeah. Don't be on the call. Yeah. I mean, don't be on video. It's yeah, okay. Right. Still add that to you. And now, now the second part of this about accommodations is sometimes people can't advocate or don't feel like they can do a proper job of advocating Correct. for their own accommodations. Mm -hmm. That's a separate issue. So I think it's uh, now you need an ombudsman or you need HR to step in right. and help be an advocate for mm -hmm. accommodations for everybody. Correct. Correct. So good, good fun. Good fun. I like it. So you're a big Snapchatter, right? I do not have Snapchat on my phone. <laughs> you're, you're on Tinder, right? right? But I... <laughs> Tinder, yes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding, uh, honey. I love you. Yeah, yeah. Don't even know which ones. I can't even tell you which one the swipe is. Yeah. So yeah. that's how I can tell Tinder, you the kid, my, my kids are on there because all they do. I, all, they I can just tell like, you. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to know. I'm, I'm in yeah. that. I'm in that phase. I'm not sure what I look. That's what they, yeah. they take pictures like oh, every two seconds. They're swipe picture. Left, picture. Right. Yeah, mm, whatever. That, that ends badly. So Snap, the company they sort of rebranded, obviously, Snap, chat to Snap, plans to add watermarks to images created with AI-powered tools. Ooh. So here's what I like about this. So this is in uh, TechCrunch. So you can just go and uh, Google Snap and watermarks, and you'll find the article. But what I love about this is as we move to using more generative AI at work, and trust, we've already talked about that several times, it'd be nice to be aided in, un in understanding what we can trust or what we know is Gen, Gen AI mm -hmm. and what isn't, or what's simulated. And I think it's okay if it's simulated. If something's made and and, and it's made with Gen, with Gen AI, like, I'm okay with that. I just think okay. the user needs to know. Yeah. That's all. I think that well, you have to. you have to, you have to let people know if it's a sponsored posting or if it's an ad. Why yeah, not? Right. Just this, put it on right? there. Yeah. Well, they've got yeah. – so what they're going to do is they're actually going to put this little little Snapchat sparkly little thing, watermark, <laughs> on the image. So when you see that, you'll be able to say, oh, okay, yeah. that was made with Gen AI. Yeah. And in the article, it has like a cat that turns yeah. into a panda bear or some shit. Yeah. But it's got like the little Gen AI sticker on it. I'm yeah. like – we need to see more of that from Facebook, LinkedIn, yeah. from everybody. Yeah, and I don't mind. Honestly, I don't on on the social feeds. I don't mind it. No, because I, don't I, on, I like I don't care what I'm looking at. Like if it's interesting, it's it's fucking it's interesting. Right. I don't care who made it or what made it. Now, if I'm getting an email or, or yeah. something from a recruiter, 
right. and he says, this email was generated with AI. And then I, I'm probably not going to read the email. I'd probably put it at the bottom, just like the people put the claim of – Or the unsubscribe uh, or anything like that. Yeah. But I, just, I, I, would, I would – Just letting people know. It would lose its impact or because I assist it with or something. I don't know. Like that that would be weird for me. I don't want to know that. Actually, um, I would, and I would think I would think more of the person if they told me that. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if, if someone told me that, I had a, I had a person one time, a CEO of a very a, a real popular uh, company, um, actually emailed me one time after I had emailed uh, a bunch of CEOs and said, "Do you make these emails up yourself?" Or, or do you like you have like a you know comedy club, or you like do you like because mm-hmm. you know my writing, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no, I actually type that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I don't I'm, know I'm if you, still, I don't I, know if he was pissed about it or. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm still trying to, trying to figure out how to help people read the entire email. Like, Dude. I, I mean, they're actually really good when you read them. They're very good. But I get like halfway down, and I'm like, I can't go any further. Just get there. Just say the <laughs> Tell me TLDR. You How much what? money do you want from me? What do you want? <laughs> oh god. So, yeah. <laughs> more, 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 uh, more things like Snap, more yeah. of those types of things. Just I, let I like it. Yep. I like it. All right. So Mercado Libre is on a hiring spree. Eighteen thousand hires about to hit the uh, hit the company. So. These uh, so if 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 you're all not familiar with Mercado, they're an Argent- Argentine based uh, e-com firm. So think like uh, Amazon. Yeah, yeah, similar, right? So yeah. all of this is in Latin America, though. So I think they're the e-com tech. They're the e-com tech, correct? Yeah. So okay. the they're they're this is all Latin American uh, hiring. So from Latam. Mexico, Latam, uh, from Mexico to Brazil, Argentina. Uh, that's where they're all going to be, but eighteen thousand of them. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a good. lot of people. And that's, first of all, that's great. Yeah, majority is going to be in logistics. So I'm not sure. And twenty five hundred is text, but tech, or the, the remainder will be in tech. I should say. I'm not sure what they'll be doing, but a lot oh, of hiring. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's just great to hear. Hiring, yeah. great. I don't care where it is. Just more yeah. hiring, more better. Yeah, definitely. So we've talked about uh, pregnant workers a couple times on the show, and they finally um, – they've got a due date on the, the final rule of the mm-hmm. implementation of the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. I think that's P- PWFA, if you're into acronyms. Mm-hmm. This is at a federal register.gov, so you can go and look at the implementation of the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. So final rule – is is effective on June eighteenth, which is whoop, about two months away. So it's been a long time coming. It's been reviewed. It's been going. But you know, okay, just make sure your companies comply because yeah. I think you've covered one or two stories about companies that have not been compliant. Yeah. I was going to say and, we talked about this last week, but you know. no, no, no. Well, they <laughs> they get the final rule just no, came down. No, no the final. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And I'm I'm surprised I missed it because I have been. Dude, you've been all over this. this. Yeah, you've been all over this. The Federal, Register, the Federal Register site is actually fascinating because they publish stuff, all kinds of cool stuff there. But, you know, no one reads. Nope. Yeah. No, one, reads a lot no of one, one goes there. Like, mm-hmm. like, like get your, any love. It's like, if you go there, yeah. they actually, like on the actual final rule, you can click into it and it will show you all the different implementations. Right. Like it's it's fascinating, and I'm sure no one uses it. So probably, probably anyhow, not. Just make sure you're compliant, folks. Yep. Yep. All right. Speaking you, of compliance, com- <laughs> speaking of compliance, you like Chipotle? I I don't actually. <laughs> I I don't understand the fascination <laughs> with going to a restaurant, standing in line for 20 minutes at a fucking yeah. buffet line yeah. to just get to the line. I, I I mean I, I love buffets. Trust me, look at me. I love buffets. Hey, no, no. I know there's not a buffet. I, I love like lion food and all that stuff. But you get there and there's chicken everywhere and beans and dirt and then there's people oh, yeah. in the back and there's food on the floor and <laughs> I I just don't get don't get it. Like I can whatever. Anyway, it's like going to just like going thirty minutes in a Chick Fil A line. Like 
Jesus Christ, chicken's it's a, good. It's, a it's not chicken, that good. It's a chicken fucking nugget. Like, come on. <laughs> anyway, so Chipotle <laughs> is settling. <laughs> It's the title of the show. It's a yeah. fucking chicken nugget. It's a fucking chicken nugget. So Chipotle settling for three million dollars. Uh, what they do? Oh, they they're not paying people, and they're scheduling bad. So they're they're uh, for paid leave issues and for scheduling. And so there's eighteen hundred and fifty three people that are going to get this. So I did the math earlier. It's like sixteen hundred bucks a piece, right? So they're not retiring. Yeah, no, no. But they're going to get a payday, right? And so what's happening here is that uh, they're scheduling though, they're scheduling employees for shifts outside of the four, there's a 14 day uh, right. rule, right? And so they're scheduling them within the week to say you need to work this specific shift. And then if an employee says, oh, hey, I can't do that. Then they're being retaliated against and dock pay. And then when they're actually working additional hours, they're also not getting compensated appropriately for that. So Again. this is more in the lines of like Subway and Jersey Mike's mm -hmm. and all the other ones that we found recently where they're just not paying their people. Yeah. This, They're just not paying and people. again, we don't know if it's Chipotle proper or if it's franchised or any of those types of things. But yeah, it's if if you're if you're struggling to find employees, if you're struggling to retain employees, this is the type of shit that that gets uh -huh. that we don't talk enough about. Yeah, it's like we talk about talk about you know, <laughs> it's a lot of the headier stuff. Like, oh, okay, just ha do these things. Like, well, you know, you just pay people, pay you treat you treat them like human let, beings. Let me let me uh let me. Uh -huh. Let me throw this at you because this this is this is really getting on my case, and I hope they hear this. They're local, so they're not going to hear it because they have nothing to do with what we would do. But maybe I'll send them a link through their little contact form or some shit like that, and I'll timestamp it for them. So my daughter works at a place called Stove and Tap. Okay, okay. she she works at a place called Stove and Tap. She's a hostess there. She gets paid no. X amount of money for being a hostess. They also said when you do running for the tables, you'll get this money, but you'll also receive tips for the right. running. Right. Okay. She's been there now for a month, maybe a little month and a half, a little more, right? It's a second job for her. She likes to work. So she's been doing the hosting job. Right. Yesterday, they said, okay, we're going to put you on running now. Fantastic. They gave her a t-shirt. She went and did that. She had, she had a clock out as a hostess. Right clock in as a runner yeah so they got the time right yeah. well not just the time mm -mm. Hey. now they're paying her a training rate of four dollars an hour and what? no tips and no oh, tips so i'm fucking i'm livid she's like well what are you talking about like i'm training they're paying me yeah. a training like yeah. If yeah, anybody that... told me I'm going to cross train you for another job in the company so you can make us more money, but I'm going to pay you nine dollars less an hour that's, and not that give you should tips. be criminal. If that's not criminal, that should be criminal. Yeah, I have a problem with this. He's, no, they told no. me it's a training rate because I'm training. No, no, no you're here's, already here's the training. Take this there. All yeah. right, training over. <laughs> like you're an employee. You're not like. No. no, I'm I'm blown away I would, by this, and I really I would, I would basically at least I'll keep my hosting gig. I'm good. Yeah, All yeah. Right. No, maybe she'll make more with tips. I don't know, but the fact that they're taking an employee who's there, moving I, them into a second role, and docking we, their pay. Are we shocked that people have a trouble attracting talent? Oh really? My God, it just we can't. We can't be shocked. We it just it can't. took. It literally took every fiber. In my body, <laughs> to not turn around and go. Let me see your manager. Like, are you kidding me? Like, do you yeah. know who you're talking to, homie? Like, come on. You know, like I, I was whatever. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Take it. Well done. <laughs> All right, let me pitch you this one. LinkedIn announces verification for recruiters to help address scam pitches. Oh, I like it. So this is going to be like a blue mark or some type of star or a unicorn or some shit. Mm -hmm. Done this on socialmediatoday.com. You can go put in the LinkedIn and verification. You'll find it. Find it. So, you know, first of all, 
I'm not sure this is a good. I I gotta really think about this. I don't know if this is a good thing or not. Especially if candidates already don't like recruiters, because now they're going to have this scarlet letter <laughs> yeah. on, their, on their profile, which again could let. I mean, it could be a good thing for candidates. So like, okay, yeah. Obviously, recruiters are reaching out to me, and they're a verified recruiter. Okay, I can trust that this is a is something real, or. Because recruiters, if you go to Reddit uh, and read anything in Reddit, Reddit about recruiters, you know, it turns out they don't have a great reputation. So I don't know if it necessarily helps recruiters. I don't. And it, I, and I, it makes them less likable or more likable. Like, what's your what's your bid? When I, I first told you that, what do you think? I like it. I, I'm ahead. opposite, so I like it. I think so. I, I whether you have a blue check mark or not. Right? right, whether you're verified or not, they're going to know you're a recruiter. It's in your job title. Like <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> now, if the verification isn't just, oh yes, Ryan is a recruiter. Yeah. Right. No, Ryan's a verified recruiter because Ryan did this. Could help. Yeah, yeah. Right. Could Ryan help. has a number of recommendations. Ryan has a number of maybe you know as a recruiter. I'm held to a different standard, right? So LinkedIn essentially was built by for recruiters. recruiters, right? Like, yep. let's be real. And so if I would have no problem as a recruiter, if I was still recruiting for LinkedIn to say, hey, if you want to be verified, we need to monitor your in We need to monitor your messaging, not your what you're saying, but right. your acceptance rate, your right. interaction rate, your, right. your so recommendations. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So not every recruiter gets it, but a job seeker knows that if I have a blue check, well, yeah. 40%, at least 40% of my messages are being not open, but replied to. My yeah. jobs are being placed. I'm confirmed that they're being placed. My recommendations. That puts more of an onus on the recruiter to actually be a recruiter. We joke all be a recruiter. Because we talk all the time about emails and how horrible yeah. they are. Yeah. Look, if you want to, if you want right. to go sell on Amazon. You, yeah. If you want to, you want to buy on Amazon. What's the? I go right to the reviews. Like I'll see the same product four times. It could be sold by the same company. I'm going to the one that has 700 reviews over 50. 100. percent That's that's their check mark. We okay. should have one too. I fully right. lo- I love that one. All right. Turn I me love around. It. I love it. I love it. Hold on, let me record that. Are we recording still? Because I want to make sure everyone knows that I turned you. And, con- and convinced you otherwise. All right. So, <laughs> William <like>, Flip Flops. <laughs> there, there's the title. It's the chicken fucking nugget and William Flip Flops. Um, <laughs> no. So, when I love when, when people over in the UK, they'll say, that's brilliant. That's an awful accent. I know. I used <laughs> to rec- I re- I've recorded that a couple of times. I said, look, honey, I'm brilliant. She's like, that just means like that's, there's knowledge. That's horrible. Me. <laughs> like bless your heart child god i'll never forget when jackie clayton said that to me she's like you know that's not a good thing I'm like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i thought i was being blessed anyhow i'm excited for this one because sort of excited i yeah, like the I idea too. i really like this idea but i was excited more excited when i read it first the headline because i saw four days days a week and i thought that's mm-hmm. it it's over the debate mm-hmm. is over we're doing mm-hmm. four days a week and it turns out that it's just four days a week in the office office yes but i still actually do like this uh so truest is tightening up the in office attendance policy right right so they're they're pushed behind this they want to reinvigorate the connected culture feel that they once had get it okay so four days a week in the office starting in the fall uh for everybody and then for their investment bankers they're in the office every day starting right. june 1st so this is and i'll let you, i'll get your take on this of course but this isn't new in 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 financial right this isn't new mm. on wall street they've been doing this for a while a lot of dev companies want to do this um as well but for some reason probably because i'm not actually going going into the office i'm not there i like the idea i think 
it would be nice to get back into an office and get back to life as it was in some respect. <laughs> that said, this is my office right here. Dude, so if you'd I hate had it. to get dressed every day and go uh-huh. to an office, I'd probably quit. So I'm just saying. That said, Wall Street pays people enough money to get to the, the office. To get to the office. And if you don't want to be an investment banker, you don't want to work on Wall Street. Don't do the job. Don't do the job. You don't want to look at a screen all day. Don't be a fucking developer. 100%. Same thing. Yeah. So uh, if JP Morgan, all of them, they all All kind of, they want you to be in the office. It's not just the, it's not just that they want to see you work type stuff because it is outcomes based. A lot of that stuff that what they do is outcome based. You either make money for the company or you don't. Um, But you know, it's, it's, it's again, this, this is not an industry that's cheap. No. They pay people really well and bonus people. So again, I mean, I went to business school with a bunch of guys that just, they went investment banking, either consulting or investment banking. And, and that was their bid. It's like, I'm going to investment banking. I'm going to go work 10 hours. I'm going to go work 10 years, put in right. 120 hours a week. And then I'll go do something else. Right. But they knew the bit, like they knew what they were getting themselves into. Right. Right. This is, this is what's interesting is this in the conflict of Gen Z and generations after that, that just, they didn't right. see wall street. They didn't grow up with you know the movie or they didn't, mm-hmm. they didn't grow up all that stuff. And they're going to be like that. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. I can do that shit from my house. That'll be interesting to see. Yeah if they become flexible or if they just keep mm-hmm. recruiting the same type of people. Yeah. And I, I, I've never been on the floor. Right. Right. So I don't know what it's like on, on the trading floor and all of that, but I do know what it's like on a sales floor in a bullpen yeah. type yeah. environment. I don't think I've ever had the energy. Right. That I had there. Oh, 100%. that I do here. Right. Like in a are sales you, environment, like you can't slack. You don't want to. You don't want to slack. No, no. That's the you irony. Want, it's like you, you know, want I'm, to no. earn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to yeah. earn. But well, and everything's a... everything's weighted that way too. Like yeah. your bonus is yeah. weighted that way. Your pay is weighted that way. You're graded out that way. It's like yeah, you're not sitting there playing Candy Crush on your phone. No, uh, no. At, at, in those types of environments, it's like Mm-mm. I want to outwork, out hustle, yeah. outshine. And there, there is a there's a different. I, I get it. All different sales are all different. No matter where you're, right. they, the conversations are different, the cadence is different, all of that stuff. But when I was on a floor, when I was in in a bullpen bullpen style environment, you have a headset on. There's 90 people talking around you, and you're talking, and you're talking yeah. with more energy than them because you need to close a deal, sure. and you need to talk over them because everyone else can hear sure. what they're saying because the headphones just weren't fantastic back then. Same idea here, but the energy is not. The energy is not the same. Now that could it's just hard be because... to get. It's hard to get that energy, that bullpen, bull, bullpen energy. It's hard to get that at home by yourself. Yeah, I mean, I by guess yourself. I could play the ambient noise. I could play the no. Wolf of Wall Street in the background no. and do it, but it's not gonna be the same. Yeah. All right, we are on to the A's, the acquisitions. We got a couple here, real quick. We'll run through these. Yeah, yeah. Job Cannon acquired. Adds me, that's A D S M E, to transform AI to dri- AI driven job recruitment. This is found on Tech EU, so you can just look and just look up a job cannon. But basically, it's a Ukrainian startup that acquires another Ukrainian st- startup. How often do we get to say that? But basically, job cannon uh, uses uses AI to simplify the job search, and adds me. It provides ad recommendations, so more more of the uh, kind of what we see with uh, AppCast and some of those types of mm-hmm, players. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. so these are two firms that basically didn't do what the other one did. So the the feature set kind of comes together. I think it's we would say it's a merge. It was in a straight up acquisition. Terms weren't disclosed, but uh, I think the customers went. So I think it's a good thing. Good for them. Uh, Good for them. Good for their customers. Everybody wins. All right. TopTel. TopTel expands leadership in custom software development with the acquisition of ViranIT.com. Mm-hmm. So if we're not TopTel, or you can say TopTel. I always say TopTel. 
Topple. <laughs> Topple? Topple? No, short for top down. Anywho, yes. <laughs> it's a clue. <laughs> I say it. I say water. You say water. You, yeah, yeah. No, you're a potato. So, uh, Top Tal is the exclusive network of top freelance talent. They could say the top three percent. So it's it's actually kind of fascinating. So like on Fiverr, they'll accept people with a pulse. Right. And and in some of these other ones, they, they don't really care. I mean, your rankings mm-hmm. will kind of sort out whether or not you're good or all that other stuff. But these folks actually vet their talent and you've got to be great at what you do. You've got to be in the top three percent. And then they'll right. let you into the town, ta- into the network. So what they did with this acquisition. So they acquired a software development development company. Right. And the reason for that is so they it can wasn't speed a small up. company, huh? 120, 130 employees. No, no. No, yeah. and and again, they could have worked with this company forever, like. Mm-hmm. But they brought development in, and the reason they brought development in is to speed up innovation. Sure. Just so we we now have these folks. Everybody's remote. In fact, I believe they're a hundred percent remote. I will have to fact check that, but uh, but I I remember on their website. This is on toptal.com dot com in their press center, so you can go find read about it. But I believe they're the world's largest remote work company. So anyhow. Cool acquisition because it's like, okay, they can see development needing to happen faster and iterating, right. iterating faster. And they went out and they were probably already working with this firm to begin with and, yeah, sure. uh, yeah. and bought them. Yeah. All right. right. Nice. Got I'm one excited more. for this one. Go for it. Quantum Work Advisory. Advisory. It's an allegiance company. Acquires Talent Tech Labs. Friends of ours, mm-hmm. and have been, been putting together really cool ecosystem maps. They've done a lot of work in the startup community and recruiting, in, in particular. So they've they've hosted uh, events, they've uh, brought in investors and helped mm-hmm. people get investing. A all lot kinds of great of research. Cool yeah, a lot of great research. Now Allegius owns that. Well, they own it through their advisory firm, uh, Quantum Work. But what what's great about this for Allegius? is they're going to take all that stuff that's public and now be able to make it for, or may have a deeper level of, of, of uh, customization or analysis for their customers. So customers are struggling with which behavioral assessment to look at. Right. Talent Tech Labs keeps track of all that stuff. And, and I think they'll probably mm-hmm. still have a publicly facing thing and still do the, you know, reports and probably yeah. still do ecosystems and stuff like that. But I think the clients of Allegius are going to win. Absolutely. So I think this is a this great one. acquisition. This is on prweb.com. Uh, so you can go and kind of read the rest of the, uh, 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 the press release, but also kind of come to your own analysis as well. Yeah, so, lot, lots of smart people there. Their office was pretty cool. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, little thing all the way up in top of the building somewhere up in New York. It was nice. Um, yeah. Always, always good stuff. All right, I've got one here from Robert Half. We're gonna get, get into the a couple, get into a research. couple research pieces. Okay. So Robert Half ran a re, ran a report, a research, a survey. Sorry, it took me a while to get that out. Yeah. Anyway. Women say that they the the ultimate um, um, the the crux here is that women say they are less likely than men to look for a new job in 2024. Huh. Yeah. So pretty basic. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here, and we'll we'll just drop the link in there. I, I forgot where we where I got this. This was at uh probably on on man bar. Uh, sorry, Robert Half. Um. So anyhow, pay gaps still exist. No surprise mm-hmm. there, right? But 60% of the women survey believe that there are ample opportunities for growth compared to the men. So that's good, right? Uh, 45% say they wouldn't leave their job anyway because of the level of flexibility that they're not willing to uh, yep. to lose. Right. I could see that. So yeah. now that makes sense to me. They're less likely than men to look for a job because the jobs that that are that 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 are be they're being attracted to, to probably have more of a return to office or less flexibility. We'll just call it that. less less, less flexibility. flexibility, right? So and I, I so I, so this is this would be true in my household too. I mean, we're pretty flexible here, right? right. I mean, 
you let me leave a little bit, right? And and I get to do things. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, that's true here too. I mean, like we're we're yeah. pretty we're we're pretty even on on driving the kids places. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. my wife's a teacher, and so her going if she were to go into a corporate role, that would really affect right. what we can and cannot do here. Because even that's though right. I'm at home, and we all know here at home, that means you're working. Like you're not like right. hey. I can go take you for a ride at two o'clock. Like it's it's not the case. Um, so I can see that. I can see that. But I can, I can see that for men too. But I I I I think what, what really kind of in the back of my mind, my mind, I, I think I was thinking about reading this and looking at the images that they have. Men are not ready to admit or to reverse the role yet. I know a couple that have become stay-at-home dads, and I know a couple yeah, dads that rejoin the workforce, and they need the flexibility because they have to go pick up three or four right. kids and take them to right. softball or baseball or whatever it is. But I don't think the majority of men are there. I don't think uh, – and I, and I think that's what I was thinking about reading well, this. Until paper. you have parity there, will you ever have parity in pay? You know what I'm saying? No, but I think that's a, a driving factor of this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Good yeah. good find. Yep. All righty. So this is the uh, – this comes to you from the Linux, Linux, Linux Foundation.org. So this is the 2024 State of Tech Talent Report by the Linux Foundation. Turns out the sky isn't falling. Despite all the headlines and all that other stuff, oh, only, a mi- Dubai. only a minority of companies reduced their technical headcount in 2023. So what we've talked about in the past, they've they've reduced tech in one place and added tech in another place. Right. So when, when they're looking at it, they're looking at total headcount. You had so many people in tech before, you have so many people in tech. Now they might be doing different jobs. So they, two points that I want to kind of bring out is – is uh, the, the domains prioritized for staffing, cloud, DevOps, security, cybersecurity, mm-hmm. AI, ML. The AI, ML is only 43%, which I, kind of shocked me. I thought that that would be higher. Uh, so I think that I want to look at a look at that number next year and see that probably more in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, but they also talk about cross-skilling and upskilling are the key strategies for technical talent management. Yeah. So... Here, you've got someone that's been trained, classically trained in Java. Okay, how do we get them to understand AI? And right. now, so it's, I, yeah, we can let them go and then go try and find that person. Good luck. Or we can upskill them and reskill them into that position and cross skill them. All you uh, have to so do I, is pay them a training rate and take away their incentives, and they'll be perfect. <laughs> nice. Sorry. It's the circle. The circle. <laughs> <laughs> the circle is completed. Yeah. So yeah. anyhow, so anyhow, sky's not I, falling. No, it's it's not. And I, I I think it's I think it's important for people to understand. It, it, I think people in in our circle, the industry, right? Right. They get it. They're not. They're like, yeah, no, we're 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 good. But I'm thinking like friends, family, oh yeah, neighbors. There's like, oh my god, the no, robot! Don't go Did in you the see tech. the robot? Did you see? Yeah, don't go in the tech. Like, no, god, it's like, horrible. Look, yeah, you're not losing your job. You're mm. just going to move over here. That's right. right. <laughs> go, go get the cert. Their, their company's paying for certifications. They're right. paying for the training. By the way, you're still getting your entire salary to be trained, mm-hmm. right? Which clearly is not the case everywhere. Move over and get the new skills, and you'll be 100%. relevant for the next thirty years. It'll take you into retirement, right? This, this is kind of like your veteran contract. Go for it. Enjoy right. it. So, All right. Let me throw another one at you. This was, uh, comes from ScienceDirect.com. Robots, meaning, and self-determination. Robots can make jobs less meaningful for human colleagues. So mm-hmm. read this report. Fascinating. So – because it's talking about the meaning of work, which we don't talk about all that often. So, what is the, what is the meaning of work at, at its core? Is it, is it better with automation, or is it less meaningful? As we think about the how the future of work 
we should probably be considering the future of meaningfulness. So, so this is just one of these reports that kind of gets you to think. Again, it's sciencedirect.com, and it's 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 just kind of it's kind of like, oh, think we think about meaning and work. I don't think we have a shared like idea of what that means. Maybe it changes. Maybe we'll never have something like that. But they're talking about as automation, as robots, as AI takes over different parts of this, that human beings then feel like their jobs are less meaningful. So what do we do in HR? What do we do in recruiting? What do we do in leadership to then change that? How do we create meaning in work while, the, while, while these other technological changes are happening? So, uh, mm-hmm. full, cool report. Go check it out. I think I'm going to read this one, but I'm already annoyed by it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of like, you know, this $5 is $5 like, hot dog? What? Yeah. Th- <laughs> this is like, I know, Jesus. You want to roll with an extra dollar. Speaking <laughs> of which, again, I know what? I'm going to cut the, the Stoven tap out, put it yeah. up on their page. Then there's another group. I love the East End. We is our, it's our trivia spot. Every Wednesday, they sponsor right. the swim teams. Are fantastic. Love you all. But if you want lettuce and tomato and onion on your sandwich, on your burger, it's a more? dollar per. Dollar for oh. lettuce. Dollar for, they'll give you the burger. Like, you'll get the burger. And you, say, oh, you say, oh, can I have lettuce, tomato, onions with that? It's a dollar for each. I get it. Just raise the price of a fucking burger. My wife. Like, I don't want to pay for that. Uh, my wife, a uh, hundred years ago, she toured a lettuce factory in Monterey. I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the processing part. So <laughs> so it's somebody picks. They grow outside. Yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> but they get processed. All right. Yeah, Just inside, checking. and it's it's. I mean, it's chemical. Like it's really super clean. You know, mm-hmm. one of those, one of those bits, and. Uh, a head of the lettuce, this is years ago, a head of the lettuce was less than a cent. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So think about they're charging a dollar and you're getting one, maybe two mm-hmm. pieces of lettuce. Yeah. That's not that's yeah. not even a uh, it's a fraction of a penny. That's that's yeah. insane. And I brought my own. I'm not lying. I I oh, yeah. had it had it in a Ziploc bag. I caught the burger. I took out my <laughs> lettuce, tomato, and onion. And I was solid. I you should have. You should have told people that. That's... Oh no! Oh no! I I, I should, went there. Have... <laughs> I did. It was hilarious too. I was trying to be funny. I was actually like, <laughs> yeah. Not so people bring stuff into the theater. Uh, it's just like uh, it's gonna be thirteen dollars. Yeah, you want no, a nine dollar? You want a nine dollar yeah. box of M and M's? The dollar store has them for a dollar twenty five. No. I'm good. Dude, I'd, I'm good. I'd love to actually go to Costco and buy a bunch of stuff, and then just like be in a theater, sell it inside the theater for fifty cents. The theater. <laughs> hey man, it's a dollar. Okay, you guys are here, great. I, I guess. But I'm gonna, I want to look into this report. Uh, oh. it, it's interesting because I, I, I actually think the opposite of this. Like I'm, I, I'm the opposite of you here. I think, I feel that. The automation, the machines, all that stuff will allow me to get to my impact quicker, especially in a mission-driven company. If I can produce more, if I can produce it better, if I can if I can preserve the quality myself by reviewing that, and right. I know that more people can get whatever it is that my mission's behind. So I think a lot of this comes down to communication and being – uh, architected in a certain way. So if mm-hmm. you architect it in a certain way, people feel that. And it's like, hey, listen, you're going to have more meaning at work because of this. Right. Right. It's the if shark it's tank. Ar- it's the shark if tank. it's not architected that way, some people are going to feel left out and are going to feel like, yeah, what what, what matters? What I is, clock yeah. in? I, I, you know. Yeah. Anyhow. Look, next. there's companies out there, they do socks, buy one, they give one yeah. away to chat, to chat, right? Yeah. Same same thing. All right. So I've got one about – this is interesting, and I, I, I kind of hmm. – I understand both sides here. Okay. So this is about Hispanic, Latino, Latina employees reporting that the pressure to assimilate to work mm-hmm. is 
basically breaking them and and mm-hmm. it's just ridiculous and so there's there's a whole bunch of numbers i mean they they did it the sample size is only 2400 people it's, <clears throat> it's enough yeah it's 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 plenty to to go through this and and it, and essentially it's it's um and i'm not gonna i don't want to read the actual numbers here because i this is one of those things where i, I could see both sides somebody saying look you're in america speak english right yeah what do they define as a similar well, what it, well, what's well, the it, well, what's the there, definition a lot of, of a similar so culturally culturally language um the way that they talk the presentation clothing like all of that hmm. in the workplace right and so it kind of i got a little bit triggered here i'm not gonna lie not gonna lie like i don't like calling customer service and not having someone that i can communicate with easily yeah yeah fair but that doesn't mean they have to learn our language well, to, you know, like, I think technology changes all this stuff in the future where you talk yeah. in their language, it, he, the, the other person hears in their language. So yeah. I think some yeah, of this yeah, is yeah. just the but moment why, in why time. Should you, why should you not be able to wear your traditional garb Again, because it's not mine? I, don't, I, I think when you deal with cultural identity issues, if you want the whole person to be at work, you accept the whole person at work. Yeah. Uh, whatever that may be, if it's if we're just talking about language, it's an that's that's there's an easy fix now and on the horizon. If yeah. it's deeper than that, you get into more cultural identity it's, issues. Exactly. Um, then that's harder, and uh, I don't think anybody should be forced to assimilate. No. Um, no. I think, and again, with English as a language, being an American, yeah, fair. Other than that. Uh, it makes it easier to operate in the organization. I get yeah. it, but that doesn't mean I can't work with you because you're wearing traditional garb or a turban or something. Like it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like no. I don't know. It, no. it, it was one of those ones that I I know exists. It's those things that exist. Oh yeah. It it kind of got on to me because there was a conversation. It was a a comment, and I it was one of those. I, I wrote it, deleted, it, wrote it, deleted, it, wrote it, deleted. It. I just fuck it. I deleted it. It was um. About sports. You know, Facebook. You know, Facebook keeps track of all that, right? <laughs> Probably does. No, they do. Probably no, they does. do. No, Some, they do. Somebody, somebody had made a comment that so and so should learn the language. It was. <laughs> it was about. It was all. It was about the Phillies. Mm. And I'm like, why does he need to learn the? We're paying him twenty million dollars a year. He should learn Doesn't English. Need to. Why? They should, and, they should probably but, not be gambling. <laughs> my bad. My, my response. My response. I was trying to come up with a response. Like, you know what? I don't need to be that guy, but how many American ball players, basketball, baseball, et cetera, soccer, right. go to other countries and play because they couldn't make it in the in the right. national right. leagues here? Right. They don't learn. They don't learn Mandarin. They don't learn Russian. No. No, they have a translator. They have a translator. Yeah. I. Whatever. All right. I'm done. Go ahead. All right. The 2024 workplace trends on the minds of. HR leaders everywhere. So this is peoplemanagingpeople.com. What I love about this report is is it highlights specific HR leaders and their thoughts. So a lot of these reports sometimes are generalized. It's like 32% of so-and-so believe this is actually Sally at General Mortars, <laughs> chief people officer, thinks this. So it's actually – it's really worth downloading to see what they think the trends are. I don't think the trends are going to be super shocking. I think it's stuff that we probably already know. Mm-hmm. However, what I love about this type of report is it's just you can identify the person. And then if you agree with them, then, you know, that's great. And if you don't, that's yeah. great as well. But you, they're not they're not hidden. They're not hidden. So Go look them up on LinkedIn and tell them you love them or hate them. I like that. All right. So, we ready to go. talk money? Let's talk money. Ding. We got some money. Rippling. Yeah, we got a couple. All Rippling right. is just, just tearing it up. Series F. Uh, mm-hmm. They take another $870 million at a $13.5 billion valuation. Right. Uh, so for those that aren't familiar, Rippling is onboarding, payroll benefits, uh, vacation okay. tracking uh, solution. Fantastic company, a ton of customers. Uh, last year, they had 
five hundred. It took five hundred million uh, mm-hmm. at eleven, uh, eleven billion, eleven and a quarter. Uh, so anyway, the the fund they're they're looking to expand internationally, and so in the small, medium sized business area, uh, and that's what they're planning to use the fund. They also, which is really interesting for me on, on this. They secured an office space, 125,000 square foot. So this is in, you know, downtown San Francisco. Yeah, this is in 25, you know, cubes mm-hmm. in a, in a, in an office no. or a rework like somewhere. Ten floors. This is yeah. This is a big. This is a big uh, a big uh, um, commitment here. So I'm I'm excited to see where it goes. These guys have grown and their customer base is massive and and they're going to do good things. So let's just make sure this is not a done deal. This is they're in talks, which they're, means yes, sorry, yeah. So so important. It, we just we just don't we just don't want people to think oh shit it's it's done. I didn't get in on that thing. No, it, it, it they're really what they're doing is this is the roll up. This is not a roll up. This is the lead up to IPO, and uh, that's what's next for them. I wish Rippling. The only thing I, I could say about Rippling is I wish they did more stuff in our industry. They don't really do a lot in our industry. They're kind of like a uh, zip recruiter in mm-hmm. that sense. They're more of a business to consumer play mm-hmm. and they don't do a lot of stuff in HR tech or work tech or whatever. So I just wish they did more stuff with us. Other than that, great company, like I said, and good for them. Yeah. Getting 10 floors and 130,000 square feet. You know, fantastic. I mean, happy for people. And that the, uh, I believe the leader of Rippling used to be the leader at another company. I can't remember his name, but like Zenefits, I think he started okay. Zenefits. Uh, but we, again, fact check oh. for the folks. Yep. All right. We got, we're going to burn through these. Upstage yeah. raises $72 million. Upstage offers document processing solutions to help businesses enhance their work efficiency. This was built in SanFrancisco.com, so you can just put upstage it's a big round so a b round 72 million in a b round that's a that's a commitment so think of uh what they're doing is ai and document management uh the whole idea is to create efficiency for employees good for them uh a big round um so go take a look at that that all right next one is nectar announces 40 million in a series b and it's a kind of a commitment to expand their culture platform. So you can find this out at nectarhr.com. I like the name Nectar. So first of all, I actually like the brand mm. and the name. Kind of and made so, me thirsty when you said it. I'm you see what I'm saying? It's the Nectar of the Gods. So cultural foundation is built on recognition. So think of culture and recognition coming together. And so because it's new... It's going to be newer technology, but it's also, I think it's going to be aimed at a younger generation. They don't say that explicitly mm-hmm. uh, in their press release, but that's kind of my, that's kind of what I'm thinking what they're going to do. I think they're in Orin, Utah. That's, I think that's where they're based. So anyhow, take a, take a look at their press release, Nectar, HR.com. All right. Caraloop, 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 Caraloop. Caraloop. So, I must say Caraloop because it's caregiver stuff. So Caraloop. Secures twenty million in Series C. That's a smaller round uh, to accelerate growth and expand caregiving support solutions for businesses as well as others. So you can find that on Careloop. That's C A R I L O O P dot com. It's in our press section. So the thing that is important to note about this, other than just following the money, is with an aging population. Employers need to add more benefits, caregiver benefits, specifically caregiver benefits. So, you know, this is just one of those deals like these types of companies that are kind of coming in and adding more of these types of benefits. They're on they're on the rise. They're going to get more money and we're going to see more of them. So good luck. Nice. Good for them. Carol, Carol. All right. Three more. Paraform. Paraform. Bouncing through them. Dude, just rolling. That's what we do. So Paraform. P A R A F O R M secures so three point six million in seed funding, which by the way, that is a large seed round, especially in today's climate, to revolutionize recruitment for startups. Found this on uh DHRmap.com. 
And so you go there and you know, just search for Paraform and you'll find it. It's super, super easy. However, this is what's fun for me is this is the first time I've seen a rec tech play exclusively focused on startups. Like startups have a different way to hire. If they're under different stress, if they mm-hmm. need something different. Like the, the it's, whole, it's all different. Yeah. The whole theory behind it, the thesis behind it is fascinating to me. So I think it's just going to be fun to kind of watch again, 3.6 in a seed. That's some people's a round. So that's a uh, good for the good luck to them. And I'm, I'm, I want us to watch them just to kind of see how they develop their ecosystem and develop right. their technology around startups. So cool. Good for them. Take two AI. You are going to love this. Sales recruiting platform raises $3 million. So this was at uh, Pulse2, mm-hmm. number two. So Pulse2.com. So you can go find out more about that. I love this play. Because what it does is it does AI job simulation for sales recruiting, right? Mm-hmm. So, so now we, th- so we like want to hire you. Playing? Yeah, but it's AI based. Yeah. No, but but for salespeople, it's great because it's a objection response, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't have the budget. Well, you know, you've got to be able. AI is just generating those things, things, yeah. and you've got to overcome it. Now we put that on the front end, like an assessment. So you go through, we we're going to hire you as BDR. Hey, can, can you handle this? Rejection management. But they didn't say this in their press release, but I could see this actually being used for recruiters in the same, much the same it way. Because a recruiter assessment. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so it's job simulation. Like I love, I love job simulations because again, mm-hmm. it lets the applicant and the company know, is this a good idea? Yeah, there, there's a lot of there, uh, there's a lot of jobs that could benefit from a simulation. There was one. This 100%. is a long time ago. I forget, I forget the company. <clears throat> they were using Oculus to do uh, mining. This is a long yeah, time yeah. ago. Yeah, but yeah. The problem is they it, hard people to find. Find they'd find them. They'd get into the little mining cart and go whoosh, right into the mine. <laughs> And they freak out, like, ah, oh, get yeah. out of this little oh, yeah. thing, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 turns yeah. out so, it's dark. <laughs> tur- turns out it's dark. You're in a two foot thing. You're like in a MRI <laughs> shell, going all the way to yeah. And so, so they they started to use Oculus back at this time to to simulate that, and it cut out all of the people coming in and leaving the same day. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I could totally see this as a recruiter thing. I, you know, I, I don't know how speaking realistic MRIs, it could get today. But speaking of MRIs, when I was in my undergrad, I, you know, I was broke. <laughs> I and, totally thought you were saying when you were in your underwear, but it's all good. Well, true. So when <laughs> I was in my undergrad and underwear, I was broke. <laughs> so I did a bunch of medical studies for money, no? and one of them it was a longitudinal study. It was, it was. It, I did it almost the entire time I was in school, and it was basically how long can you stay in an MRI machine? Uh, <laughs> so what I would, so what I would do is go out and get hammered, <laughs> and show up, this and I just fall the, asleep. Is this where the pill addiction happened? <laughs> no, no, no. Close. And I, dude, it's so great because after so much time in an MRI machine, you start to hallucinate. Like you start to see stuff, ants. Spiders, I can't even get. I can't even stuff. get in. I, I, I oh, tried. It's great, man! It's so I, awesome. Yeah. They paid like forty dollars an hour. Like yeah. I'm like I'm gonna stay in this bitch for like eight hours. Yeah, no, there's nothing I can <laughs> yeah. do. Cash money. All right, we got one last funding. All right, take it home for us. Wage Stream raises 17.5 million pounds. I have to say that as pounds. That because is it heavy. Is sterling to enhance financial services for frontline workers. So really what you need to do is this is at fintech.global, and you can go find out more about it. But think we're earned wage access in the United mm-hmm. States and other types of benefits. For hourly employees, so all kinds of financial wellness types of benefits. This right now, they're mostly in the UK, and the investment 
uh, came came from you know UK investors, British investors in particular. Mm-hmm. But you can see this coming to. I think they have a little small presence in Spain and a small presence in the U.S. But you can see that this is what they're going to do is just they're going to focus on the frontline worker and build more and more you know financial wellness or wellness and financial services around them. So good for them. Seventeen nice. and a half million pounds, which I think is about. 21 million? Yeah, I don't know. Somewhere there. I have no clue on the conversion. <laughs> clue. I'm, ge- I'm guessing. No yeah, so it, could, it could be 12, right? It could be 12. You never know. So no a lot of funding this week. I, I, I came funding. with one. You came with 97. So we let uh, you run with uh, it. We're not keeping track, Brian. That's all we do. <laughs> We're keeping track. I know you are keeping you didn't, track. You didn't so. mention a, 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 a previous episode, though. So I think this is a success. This is a, it's a good Sunday for us. I will take a win when I get it. And I did a little bit of research to make sure none of my stuff was in the documents from previous weeks. And yeah, it worked right. out. So anyway. Good stuff. So thank you all for listening, for watching. If you see us out there, say hello. Otherwise, have a wonderful, wonderful start to your week. We'll see you next Snoopy time. Snoopy loves you.